keep up the double. Oh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 1015 of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. I'm your host, Christian Piles, joined today by J.D. Raider. Ben Funky Askren, he's somewhere. I haven't seen him yet today. I've just heard his voice. I'm right here. He's right there. He's right there. There he is. Oh, he got a haircut. No, I didn't. I got a haircut. Like, okay, well, you just ago. slept strangely on your head then. Sometimes that happens. You did not shower this morning. No shower, Ben. And I'm joined today by David Bray, who almost completely disrupted the entire start of the show when I asked him to shut the door. <laughs> he said, "So keep out the devil." He said, "Keep out the devil," which is for the uh, you VBS goers back in the day. You you know that's a that's a classic song. <laughs> yeah. Shut the do, keep out the devil. Uh, but for most of you, you may not know what that is. But it cracked me up. What's I VBS? V- I don't know VBS. Vacation Bible School. I'm sure Amy uh, Amy probably takes your your youngsters to that. If I had to I guess, they go to that actually. Oh, it's fun. Maybe. Oh, they would love it. It's like wrestling camp for okay. church kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not as much uh, weight cutting, but just as much shenanigans. Okay. Episode 1015. So here's what's going on in wrestling. We had Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic last week, uh, Journeyman International. And then this week we've got Last Chance Olympic Trials Qualifier, which promised to be outstanding. Uh, ben, where were, were you anywhere this weekend? It was it was slow. Did you have some withdrawals? I was like, there's got to be some wrestling for me to watch somewhere. Maybe you're fixed. Well, shoot. I mean, I went, I uh, went to wrestling. We had we had a tournament on Saturday. Oh, really? Caleb's first freestyle tournament ever. We had one in uh, okay. San Marcos, How Texas. You do? He did. I, man, I, I, it was a movie, as the kids say. It was yeah. it was great. Well, all right, his first match, um, he lost. Kid, kid's really tough. I mean, none of these kids are good, obviously, but this kid is good. Mm-hmm. But we wrestled him before, wrestled hard. Then the second match was crazy. He was down 8-0, and he comes back, and it's 8-8. And then he gets – Caleb has an a uncanny ability to not protect himself very well. It's actually – it's incredible. It's very stressful for me. Like, he just has really um, – Like, he gets hurt a lot? He just has bad instincts on how to, like, protect himself when he's in bad – like. He's just not graceful or just like understand that. Yeah. And he got dropped. He was on a high crotch and he got put right on his head and he, got, he kind of like freaked out for a little bit. Uh, but then he wrestled back. He got, got it together and he got a takedown in like the last five seconds. He won 11, 10. And then, Boom. and then he was still like really rattled. And then we wrestled this other kid. We wrestled before and he's beat us before. Kind of a good match. Well, this kid, he underhooks us, which we knew he was going to happen. We worked on, but it didn't matter. And we got to rear standing, and Caleb's fighting hands standing straight up. And then we all know how this movie ends. Uh-oh. And, <laughs> Boom, uh, he got sent. He literally got sent. He got sent, and he said it felt really weird. And um, I, was, <laughs> I thought there was like an age you were allowed and not allowed to do that in freestyle. Well, you but, can't go. I think you're not allowed to go straight back, but you could go like oh, over yeah. the shoulder one way or the other. Yeah. Well, it didn't well, that's really matter. Fun. Yeah. So then that that, um, that was a tournament. Is he schoolboy? Okay. Yet? Uh well he say? he's twelve, but he has. What year was he born in? Two thousand eleven. Oh yeah, he's a schoolboy. Yeah. Yeah. Social security you. number. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I think it's like nine. Yeah, nine. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, it was fun. We had, uh, man, I tell you what, uh, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm a folk style man. Uh, that's just kind of what, or at least when coaching, that's like my comfort level. But we, we, they did Greco and then freestyle. This tournament took like 45 minutes, the, the Greco board. It was like, they were getting in uh, like four. Pins in one minute oh, or what? Pins and te- it was so fast. It was so, it was so much faster than folk style tournaments. And even the huh. freestyle, like, really cruised. We were in and out of there by, like, but yeah. we were out before lunch. It's kind of nice. Nice. But anyway. well, we had uh, – Max took some guys to Journeyman. Um, so he was out there. And then uh, usually I do this uh, extra Saturday morning practice, either Friday or Saturday, depending on the week, for our guys who are going to the U.S. Open. Um, and I told Mitchell when I was at NCAA, is walking around with the sign, the sign walker guy. Yeah. Uh, when I did that, I said, hey – 
you know, we work it out. If you're home for Easter and you want to come in. And he said, I will be home. I said, well, hey, do you just want to run it? And then he said, yeah. And so I thought, oh, I should just do a camp so he can make a few bucks because college kids don't have a lot of money. Um, and we did a camp. And he sold out, so then we did a second camp. So he did Dang. two camps for us. It was great. Doubles of the camps? Well, it sold out in like an hour, and then, or sorry, well, a day, and then people were mad at me because they didn't get in. And I'm like, uh, okay, fine. And I, I said, Mitchell, would you please do another one? And he said, sure. How many, uh, uh, what, what does he go over? How to wrestle at um, the same pace? Yeah, he just said, go live, and then they went live for two and a half hours. <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> no, it was a lot of his, his hand fighting and, um, you know, hand fighting, entries into attacks and that type of stuff. What what would you say is the signature or the hallmark of his hand fighting? Uh, well, you know, it's really changed since he went to Penn State. Um, you know, I guess there was a lot of things he, he already did, but then he's definitely added some uh, more unique things um, uh, to it. So it's good. Well, I know it's good. I'm not, what's specific? What is? I can't do? tell you all his secrets. It's not I a mean, secret. You, you, we all watched him. It is a secret. I'm asking. It is really. You can't see where his hands. I don't are know. On? Listen. If it was my, if it was something I did or something I taught, I I would tell you. You know, if it's someone else's business, I'll let them tell you. If you want to ask him, no, you ask no, him. no, that's not why you're here, Ben. Yeah, you're here to say, hey, when I watch, he does this. He's he's really I'm good. Here, Over I'm collar here to give all the or inside of all my athletes. No, it's not a secret. You're really well, not even going to talk about secrets. what he's good at in hand fighting. What he's good, I mean, um, he can, I mean, one of, I guess the biggest thing would be he continually moves, which that's, I mean, that's where a lot of people fail is they, they lock in and they sit in a very specific, uh, tie for, you know, a prolonged period of time, which is not good. Right. So he's consistently moving from tie to tie, which is, that's how you be most effective in your hand fight. Right. That's really important. So I guess if, I don't know if that that's not a secret. That's uh, that should be obvious for yeah. viewers and most people just aren't disciplined or determined enough to do that. So I guess that's, uh. You know, that's something. That is definitely something. Yeah. I'm very curious about what, what the plan is, you know, for, for Penn State's lineup next year because there's so much, so many variables. And I was listening to a podcast yes. with, uh, oh, I forget, it's the Locked On Nittany Lions podcast, but Jeff Byers was a guest on it. And he was kind of running through all the scenarios. And he was saying, and he confirmed some things that we knew, like Levi's big. Uh oh, tell me. Uh, Levi's big. He talked about it as like, it was not, you know, it, it was tough. And we've kind of been talking about that for a while, but then he just keeps making 57 and winning like every match he wrestles. Yeah. Um, so, but that's a thing. But he also confirmed, not confirmed, uh, said for the first time I think we've talked about is that Braden Davis, pretty big, t difficult pull at, uh, at times. And I thought I did think kind of at Big Tens. I remember seeing I was like he is kind of good size, and so mm -hmm. you wonder for for next year they have flexibility with Braden because he could redshirt still if he wants yep. to go up to one thirty three. He could stay at twenty five, be or you know they also have Luke Lillidal, which I'm curious, David, as from the high school perspective, as you watch him, does he look like someone that and predicting this is like literally impossible with 25 pounders? But is is it something where he can make it this year? So you should wrestle him this Ooh, year while yeah. he can still make it. Yeah, I mean, I think Luke Lillidal is he's, I think he's going to have probably long term designs on 57 kilos. Yeah. And that doesn't always mean they're going to stay at 125 in college. Obviously, Vito and Dayton Fix are in that category, but. Yeah, I think he can make it this year. I mean, he's he's beating NCAA finalists in, on the freestyle circuit already. I think that's a guy that is going to be 100% ready to go this year uh, or 2024-25 and I think they'll I I think they'll use him. Yeah. I, I think if he's if if Braden is big for 25 then mm -hmm. they've got good synergy there. Um but the has got uh two years. a whole bunch of years left. Two, two more years, yes. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, I, I want oh, another thing Jeff said was basically like by the end of last year, KSAC or the end of this year. So like two weeks ago, KSAC was a, a full size 49 pounder, which he did look like that. Uh, he did look like that. And it's something you see with these true freshmen. It's not all that uncommon. You know, they're still yes. growing just one year out of high school. But that mm -hmm. that makes Bo returning at 141 maybe and he said this also like 
very likely that Bo does return now. Seems like almost a certainty that he's coming back at 141. And so for Kasek, he could redshirt. Is he going to want to is another question. But Van Ness is returning. So we'll see. And then does Great. do Mitchell and – I think we talked about this on the last show. Do Mitchell and Levi do a, do a flip-flop? That would be interesting. I don't know. You don't know. We know Ben doesn't know. I don't ben, know. ben won't confirm. I don't know. I'll bother him. Ben won't confirm that Mitchell uses a, an over collar. I don't know the, the idea that we're going to get any sort of insight. Well, I on said I wouldn't sell a secret. It's not I'm a sorry secret. I'm not selling my it's not secrets. a secret. You're not. Even, you're not paying me. I pay me double. I might share some secrets. On pay here. you double. You got to pay the Mitchell uh, ah. camp fee. Pay Mitchell. Yeah. Pay the camp fee. You could have showed up. I would have went. Could have showed up. You didn't tell me. Seems like you don't want me to know. I actually just put it out on Tuesday, so you would have to, you know, buy a late flight. It, you know, Caleb probably would have got more work than at the uh, Swashbuckler Freestyle Tournament. <laughs> Listen, this was an elite tournament. You know that because it's literally in the title. It's called the Elite Throwdown. Elite only throwdown. No, only the elite or those with $20 could enter. <sighs> so There you go. That's how you know. Well, Mitchell's camp was only 40 so I think you would have got Dang. your worth. We could have we yeah. entered Freestyle and Greco for 40 bucks. <laughs> We didn't do we didn't do Greco. It's funny because he's like, ah, I probably should have done it, but he hates Greco like more than maybe any living American right now. And uh, uh, he's like, man, I should have done it. And then after he got dropped on his set, it's like, ah, just do freestyle. You know, Christian, if you um, if you move to Wisconsin yeah. and we set up a studio, um, I would continue on FRL if it was alive and in person with you in the mornings, that and would be fun. Train at AWA. Sounds like the perfect uh, solution. I would freaking love that. Don't, don't threaten me with a good time. That'd be fun. I could live, I could live in Wisconsin. It, there's some pretty uh, parts. <laughs> would you think you try knew? to get a house in Haunchyville? Oh yeah. That's where, see, I, I that's a growth area, you know, uh -huh. nowhere to go, but up. It's kind of like some parts of Detroit we stayed in, uh, <laughs> during mm -hmm. the NCAA. Great prices on Airbnbs. Bro. Oh my gosh. Great prices. They still I get heroin so, needles included. I get so mad at my 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 children and, and my father because they loved I I am good. I have great judgment on Airbnbs across for years and years. Strong track record, nice places. One time in Detroit, we stayed, it was a it was a horrible, truly horrible place. And they act like every time we, we get a place, they're like, is it like Detroit? No, it's never like Detroit. It's been like Detroit one time. They never forget. But they never forget. They, they don't. And they won't let me forget. Good for nothing, kids. Okay. Ben, how much <laughs> Greco do you train? At all? Any? Uh, you know what? In Heartland, my, my the location I'm at, they badger me so much. The, there's a few parents. I'm not going to name them. <laughs> then they get mad I don't send enough emails about the Greco class. Like, beat it. You know, like... So Sinclair and Stromberg, they're doing their practice, and then they're teaching a Greco practice afterwards for the youths, the younger youths. Okay. So not the high school kids. It's more like middle elementary. Uh, I mean, I suppose the high school kids could show up if they wanted to. But, uh, yeah, Stromberg, uh, Grant Stromberg and Aiden Sinclair will be teaching the class. It's at 7 o'clock tonight if you're an AWM member and you want to show up. Um, and then it will go seven weeks, I think, until maybe Memorial Day or something like that. How long have you been uh... – using the high school kids to, to run certain classes? Um, well, they, Noah, I think Noah might have taught the Greco class last year. I'm trying to remember. Um, I mean, Keegan and Mitchell and other high school kids have helped out with the ninjas and training for uh, forever. Long time. Okay, cool. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, one time, actually, it was funny when, uh, and it's kind of, it's awesome because it's kind of the standards being set, but this, this dad said to me, uh, Joe, the other day, uh, well, this is a while back. This is when Mitchell won Junior World, so last August or whatever. He's like, yeah, when Mitchell, uh, when Vince, his son, joined Ninjas, his coaches were Keegan O'Toole and Mitchell Messmerick were running that class. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Like, That's you know, he, he signs up and you got two Junior World champions <laughs> that are teaching the class together. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Well, very cool. Okay. Uh, qu quick uh, mm -hmm. interruption from the chat. Biggie US oh. M says that he oh. tried to get a job in Wisconsin so that he could move to attend AWA. He almost had it secured. So 
Ben, I would just keep it. one, just keep one spot open for this guy's kid. Don't know how old he is, but yeah. okay, he's we did. I, 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 so I said we never had a move in. We have had one move in. One family moved, and they didn't move very far. It's from Illinois, so um, but that's the only move ins we've ever had. We've never had any others. But at some point, I'm assuming some people will see the light and they'll see that be- Wisconsin is a beautiful place to raise a family. Biggie was a finalist for the job, so just keep keep a seat warm. <laughs> keep a seat warm for uh, for the I'll son of Biggie. Which job? He doesn't know. He didn't tell me. <laughs> CEO of Culver's. That probably is. Boom. That'd be a good job. Yep. That would be a good job. I'd apply for that. I'm not qualified, but I like their food. I think passionate passion for the product <laughs> is is important. Head of marketing. Head of marketing. <laughs> All I do is just talk about how tasty it is on this show. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we talked a little bit about Penn State lineup. He another thing he said was like he floated. Maybe Josh Barr 197 eventually. Does he want to go up there? Bar. So big bar. Well, we got two Marisolas coming in up top. Yeah. Got Zach Ryder. Zach Ryder. Zach Ryder. It's, it'll be it'll be crowded. I'm curious for Carter. Very crowded. You know, if he comes back, obviously he's he'll be 74. All right. I wonder this. Does Carter say, hey, I want to go out big and, and happy? Maybe he just goes 184. But he's going, he's alleged, okay, so I think we maybe start giving this some more credence. He's still saying he's going 74 kilograms, and and it's only 18 days away or something. Yeah. Um, So he must have plans on making the weight. We've all, for a long time, kind of dismissed it and said, dude, he's not making that weight. Um, I did look at him on the stage, and he didn't look quite as big as maybe I had thought, so maybe he can make it. I remember at the All Star, I remember thinking these guys. I remember, I think David even. I think it was probably off, off mic, but like Makai or might have been on Makai and Carter wrestled, and then Parker and Truex came out, and David mm-hmm. was like, "I think those last guys were literally bigger. Like they just looked huge. They were who so Makai and Carter. Carter, they mm-hmm. looked really big. They obviously weren't bigger, but they looked so big." Okay, well, it's 18 days away, Christian, so you're saying he's not going to make weight or what? I said he's, of course he's going to make it. It's on a vision quest. You better make the weight, son. He's going to make it, no problem. Especially now that he has to end Jordan oh. Burrow's career. He did say that. <laughs> oh, he did say that. He did say that. Um, I, I've been thinking about that whole thing. It, The whole thing bugs me. I don't even know. If Why I'm does it bug it. you, Christian? Well, because, one, I think it was just a just an enormous overreaction from Bo Nickel in terms of what Jordan said. Cause I went back cause I hadn't listened to it cause I was there and I was like, Oh, I, all right. Well, must not have been good. And I listened to it. And the first time Cormier literally asked, asked him, you didn't bring up Cormier, which, you know, mm-hmm. maybe there's reasons for that. And then he does. Cormier, see, listen, I do a podcast with Cormier and I'll tell you, you got to watch out with him. Cause you know what Cormier does? He's a perpetual instigator. Like yeah. he knows what he knows yeah. what's going to get people fired up. And sometimes they've asked me a question. I said, Daniel, I know what you're trying to get me to say to get everyone upset. Yeah. So stop right now. Yeah. And so he he asked, and and Jordan was basically like, no question. Yeah, you you attack. You know, I think mm-hmm. he said, yeah, absolutely. You go after the, that leg. And then Carter talked. I think it was after his post match interview where he says April 19, 20 was what I'm thinking about. And Jordan, I think, mentioned it again. Like, yeah, I'm going after it. Or I'm definitely going after it. Which, I, I what bothered Bo is that that Jordan, he said that Jordan made it about himself. But I feel like there's, like, sort of a misunderstanding of from Bo's perspective of why J- Jordan is there to be Jordan Burroughs because he is Jordan Burroughs. He's not there because he is this gold standard color commentator for for the sport he's there because he is Jordan Burroughs. He is a, a competitive, an athlete that is still in competition and like his lens and how he's, he looks at things is like the reason he is actually there. And I thought he gave the appropriate amount of like credit and compliments to Carter for how well he's done. So what I thought, of, so what I've concluded is this Bo is either insanely sensitive. I don't think that's probably true. Or there's more to this story. There's Nittany Lion Wrestling Club, Heat, Beef, whatever with Jordan. There's Those guys go to camps together. All those guys are around each other all the time. To me, this is something where 
I was not cool, like, but from Bo's perspective, I was not cool with Jordan. I've not been cool with Jordan. I don't appreciate the way he does X, Y, and Z. And he said this one thing, and that just kind of sent Bo maybe over the edge, be like, all right, let me talk about this this dude a little bit. And, you know, he's kind of the one thing that the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club is not like, that's the one hump they haven't gotten over yet, even though Dake. <laughs> Dake. No, Dake. Well, no, no, you, no, unless no, you include no. Dake, you don't include Dake. He wasn't Nittany Lion. He at was that not time. a Nittany Lion when he beat him. No Nittany Lion guys has beaten Dake. Now, well, if you bring him over, listen, if if hey. you bring Zauerbach Sitikoff <laughs> over to the Nittany Zauerbach Lion, Sitikoff signed with Nittany Lion. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they pay him lots of but money. Now, but now it does feel like the, <laughs> that time is done, and and feels like Jordan's um, going to get beat. Hey. This, Think about how many Nitty Line wrestlers are in the field at that weight class though to wrestle Jordan. Insane. Yeah, he, it's, it's kind of dumb. They got an army. Well, you know, Levi, Facundo, Mitchell, Nolf, uh, Kyle Dake, Starachi, Starachi, Starachi. Apparently, yeah. Um, Which I feel like Christian still doesn't think he's going to make the weight. No, I I weight. only think he's going to make. You're the one that keeps bringing it up. I have no. You just said he was bigger than Parker Keck guys in three minutes ago. Well, yeah, I said that David said it, and I also said that that was at the All Star Classic. Mm, got it. Um, he's gonna he's make Parker Kick guys and could not make seventy four. No, he could not. He's gonna make. Uh, he's gonna make the weight. The functionality is is the question. I, I've, if he says I'm going seventy four, I feel like he is gonna make the weight. But how his body's gonna react to that is is the real question. Tin foil hat time. Maybe there's a little a little beef there between. Burroughs and NLWC. Yeah. But Bo Nickel got a fight coming up. Is he trying to keep his name out there? Well, that's it. And that's the other thing. And, but, and again, I don't think that's, the, I don't think that's the case, but uh, possibly. I don't think it would. Yeah. I think keeping your name out there, calling out like the most famous wrestler that's ever lived is like maybe a move, but I feel like it's not really in the MMA playbook. Like you want to keep the heat kind of in your thing. You know, well, your- I don't know. I would say, I would say some some people think, and I don't, I do not think this is Bo, but some people think hey, you know, any press is good press. Yeah, um, yeah. Watching the so he had the tweet, and then I listened to his podcast afterwards. I, I, it doesn't. He's he's either a, a well trained thespian or he genuinely feels this way. I think he genuinely feels the way he's saying, which means I don't think. Well, what I'm saying anything. is, and I don't necessarily think this to be the case but is he playing it up a little bit mm. and doubling down tweeting that out then talking about it on his podcast so people come in tune into his podcast yeah i think it's it. i think yeah, it's, maybe it's that more was, likely it that uh, i mean i haven't listened to that yeah, podcast yeah, yeah. <laughs> played right into his hand yep no i think i think he probably just genuinely doesn't like jordan and yeah. that it probably rubbed him the wrong way uh, I didn't listen to how Jordan said it on the broadcast, but I think I said it the next Monday uh, after the NCAAs is that like, I have a really hard time believing Bo wouldn't go after an injury. If the injury was, you know, if, if it helped him win the match um, and he needed it, like maybe if the guy sucked and he could avoid it, he probably would. But if it wasn't the case, then he'd probably go after it. I do think they said their beef wasn't with that fact. It was with the fact that he said that. That he said it. They said it was unprofessional. Well, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, again, that's why Jordan is there, right? I don't think it's unprofessional. And, I mean, do you want honesty or do you want, yeah. like, him to just be like, no, I wouldn't. Att- what what if he's, what if Jordan said, no, I wouldn't. Think of the kids, him? Christian. Think of the kids. What, what, what oh, kids? I, yeah, I, I wouldn't have believed him. What kids are wrestling in the NCAA finals with the torn ACL? Like, that's not, or whatever he's got. I don't know. <laughs> I have no, no idea. comment. No comment. Obviously, a knee injury. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's, it's not relevant. I, I can't stand the what about the kids. This is not kids. These are not NCAA. I, mean, I like the Charles Barkley. Like, uh, it's not like, yeah, he didn't say anything that morally bad. It's like, I no, agree. you're slow in this way. If, if, if We get it. You're Michael Jordan. F them kids. <laughs> F them kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah was it michael that Let's said that go. i don't think he actually said it but he, but that's like the meme because he it was something yeah. with shoes he didn't or something I well the shoe thing was he said that republicans buy sneakers too maybe, <laughs> maybe i'm mixing that up with something yeah. else. i thought like he like didn't uh, donate shoes or took some shoes away from 
a donation, and that's where it started. No, I've, I misremember. I I don't know about you guys, probably not. But I just I just rewatch probably once a quarter. I rewatch the last last dance. dance. <laughs> it freaking it gets me so pumped up and inspired. It's incredible. Is it, wasn't it like t- a ten hour series or something? Yeah, I just do it. How do you watch it all? What do you do with your life? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I don't just sit down and watch. You know, you have you traveling or whatever. You know, okay. there's plenty of time right. to watch shows. You know, while Caleb, you were, leave me alone. I'm watching the last dance. Again. Honestly, I want him to. I want him to watch it, but it's so profane that uh, I, don't, mm-hmm. I don't think he'd like it. <laughs> that was that was fun when those were coming out in real time during 2020. Yeah, and we all watched them <laughs> we together. Talked about it on FRL. We had Lee Roper come on and break down the latest episode of the last day. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Did you guys see what was on Twitter? Uh, there's a lot of stuff uh, on Twitter. You got to be a little more specific oh there, bud. Was it Good a chance? Yes, I'll be, I will be more specific. Dana White was talking about how he loved Vision Quest. Oh, yes. Shane Spark oh. didn't comment he said on it, us. And Lex Friedman said it was the greatest combat sports movie of all time. Gosh, I don't know what's wrong with that. It's not him. a good movie, guys. I'm sorry. It's I know not. it It has a special place in many wrestling people's hearts. I'm not saying you shouldn't enjoy it. Dana White said it literally affected his life. That's beautiful. Well, that's good. Hey, where's Shane Sparks been, actually? He texted me last night. I, I should have asked him why he hasn't been on the show at all. I don't know. People are clamoring mm. for a, a, a new Roadhouse movie review. So, okay, we should watch it. Wait, is that actually out? It's out. It's out. I think it's. you oh, can really? watch it like at home now. Amazon. I, I think it went straight to Amazon. Straight to Amazon. Went straight to tape. That's a good sign. Um, they use tape still? Look how old you are, Chris. Yeah. About tapes. <laughs> I think straight to tape is more like an industry term. Or what do they call it? Yeah. Uh, but no. Oh, hey, can I say one more thing about the Bo JB thing? Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think the one thing that uh, that they should maybe both acknowledge, and I think it's totally fine, is uh, I think jo- uh, Bo was saying something about he's got a big ego or some, something to that effect, right? Yeah. And it's like, I mean, when you're the best in the world, like, and and Bo does too, right? When you're the best in the world, you have you should probably do have at least some ego, right? Maybe you don't you don't want to get out of control, but I think that's just a little bit the nature of the beast, and so I kind of thought it was silly that Bo was saying that he's got such a big ego and it's like ah yeah a little bit but he has been the best guy in the world seven times so yeah. you know like there's probably some ego there it's not a well, big deal and Bo has some also it's also not a big deal at all I think you kind of have to almost to be yeah, to get bit. to that level um and there's like yeah. a uh a lot of recently there was this hit piece that came out on the LSU women's basketball head coach and basically the moral of the story is She's just kind of mean. Yeah. But like. She's mean? Uh, apparently. I didn't actually read it, but that, that was the main takeaway. That's it? <laughs> More or less. Um, but I think to get to the level where you are the best in the world at anything or in the top, you know, X percentile, you have to be a little egotistical. You have to be a little mean. You have to be crazy to be that bit. good at something. Yeah. Who's Who is, you know, the at the height of their their craft and doesn't have that who isn't a little yeah. insane john jones yeah <laughs> it's like ah! he's the one guy i can think of i mean dc for <laughs> sure ben funky asker and obviously notorious no i mean i think well i think you know i i, I said this before <laughs> he said uh, one time ben Askren said they asked uh what is the percentage chance that you'll win ncas and he said 100 and they said well what if your plane crash he's like well that is such a small percentage is actually negligible. So it's still 100. Still 100. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, listen, I, was, I wasn't I was wrong. No. Um, it definitely was 100. So, um, oh my God, you, I think it's important. I said this, I think I said this about the brands is, I think there's something that you have in your younger life and your competitive life, which drives you to be the best. And then as you step out of that arena uh, as an active competitor that you need to turn off because it's not healthy to have in your yeah. regular life. Um, and I, I think that's that, that I think that is the case is like there are, there are ways I felt when I was, you know, 23 or 25 and I was competing and I was, you know, a lot more aggressive and maybe uh, and I, I probably didn't have as big of a chip on my shoulder as some of these dudes do, but it's a little chip on the shoulder that you constantly want to prove that you're the best and you're just ready to compete at all times. And then as you get older and you take yourself out of the competitive arena, you need to kind of step back. But these guys are both in the competitive arena, so they should have 
some chip on their shoulder. They should have some ego. It's completely healthy. Uh, and that's probably what they need to be really, really elite. Yeah. I, I would say it's interesting with the, the coaching dynamic in wrestling because like football is a team sport. It's really important. Like the team aspect always is highly important, but like for re- every wrestling coach was once a wrestler and likely a very good one. And that's like a very selfish yes. pursuit. And then you step into coaching, which is like the most, you know, it's very selfless and you, know, you have to be thinking yes. broadly and about the team. And it's just a really, it's a big, probably, I won't say the most in wrestling cause I don't know, but like it's one of the bigger flips in like probably mindset where like basketball is like, it's, it's a team sport for sure. And but to yeah. counter that, it's like you hear Michael Jordan, nobody actually like really liked him, like wanted to hang out with them outside of, yeah, the practice unit, unless they're but really uh, like to okay. Gamble. Honestly, that's that's a great example. Though, is like I feel like besides having that damn Nike deal where he made billions of dollars because he signed it when he was younger, like I feel like he's almost struggled at a lot of the other things he's done yeah. in life. Whether you know, like in those positions, because he hasn't been able to turn that switch off, then that switch is what made him such so such an elite competitor. And he probably needs to tone it down a little bit in the other pursuits in his life, and he hasn't been able to. And that's why he's kind of. Like, I don't know, bounce from thing to thing or struggled a little bit. And it's because I think when you're the athlete on the court or field, mat, et cetera, whatever, you can control, at least partially, fully, if it's an individual sport, the outcome. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. If he's a Michael Jordan, when he became the owner of the Bobcats, he could not control what those athletes did on the court or in practice, et cetera which was probably infuriating. It's why he was a bad teammate or quote unquote bad teammate. Some would say good teammate, but he demanded a lot of his teammates more than a lot were willing to give, which made them mad. I'm going to be really irritated if Michael Jordan goes off about, about us, what we're saying about him. that would be really <laughs> frustrating for me. I think he'd say nail, hit the nail on the head. Probably. <laughs> kind of. What was the funny story? Uh, he like punched somebody in the face or, well, or something. Steve Kerr. Yeah. Yeah, he punched Steve Kerr. He also hit Will Purdue, who's really big. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, like that's probably not a guy you want to go play video games with after practice or grab a beer or something. But that's why he I was don't know. the video, best baseball player. If you player play of all video time. games, you're entering into a competitive arena, and you probably want some of that. But that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, if you're really good at golf, you wanna you wanna play with him, take his money. Yeah, he loves gambling or throw the quarters at the wall like yeah the security guys oh i saw that video that was funny, that was funny. yeah it was, it was called <laughs> never mind him and shohei uh otani would get along oh my gosh <laughs> now nah, he didn't do it a lot of debt or something that yeah I, he better not have a lot of debt he's made he's gonna make so much he must make a hundred million dollars well, a year in 4.5 mil compared to what he makes isn't uh completely but didn't he, didn't he defer a lot of his income yeah but that's because he makes so much in in uh, conspiracy yeah. time, if you were a guy who knew uh, you have a gambling problem and go, I can't take all this money at one time <laughs> because I will literally start placing $150 million bets. But oh. a little self-discipline, a little self-knowledge, I can only do $1 million a bet here and there. He probably called that. He probably got a tip from 1-800-BETS-OFF, and they were like, hey, just here's a good idea. Here's defer, a good your, idea. defer your salary. <laughs> defer, defer your $500 million salary. And then you literally can't only bet so much. It's a weird a month. It's a weird thing because he says uh, yes. that his interpreter stole $4.5 million. Cause like, well, that's I, what he came around to. That's not what he said right away. Yeah, well, he, he, he said lent, right away he lent him the money. <laughs> I lent him the money, but he actually stole it. Yeah, it's interesting. I feel like. Are they really pressing it? They say MLB isn't doing anything, bro. They say this dude is like the biggest mystery. He's like, there's never been a star where it's less known. He like just randomly got married. His teammates didn't know he had a girlfriend. No one knows anything about this guy. Also conspiracy time that came out. What a week before the news of his gambling came out. Was he trying to mask that a little bit? Hey, look at, look at my pretty wife. Also, by the way, I gambled like millions and millions of dollars. But look at my (laughs) wife. Maybe she's the bookie and it's a spousal privilege thing. I don't yeah. Know. Ooh. Could be that. Yeah. We got that. That'll be for Thursday's episode uh, to figure out. Avery Gaming wants us to talk wrestling. Oh, what are we talking about? It all connects, Avery. I'm surprised Caleb uh, even oh, wrestled this weekend on opening weekend. 
Oh, that was tough. Well, we Ooh. got back for all the games. They lost, <laughs> which they got swept by the horrible Yankees. Oh, we're talking um, baseball. We're talking baseball now. Just a horrible play. Yankees, and you're an Astros oh, fan. Yeah, baseball I know. Hey, I, you know, uh, topic about uh, we have the last chance qualifier, which I'm attending this weekend with some of our athletes. Yes. Um, you guys have, I'm just kind of glancing through the article. You are not article. I don't know. The, the notes you put in our doc about the guys for next year. And you have Christian Carroll at heavyweight. Did you notice Christian Carroll is registered 97. at 97 kilograms, which yes. I thought was interesting. They're trying to slim him down maybe because Doucette's got a year left. And then they got Cody, Cody Merrill, Merrill coming in. And he's really large. So I put him at 97 too. So I don't know what weight he's going to go. Yeah, it seems like they, they want to bring him down. But the, everyone, it was funny because everyone's like, dude, Carroll's down. He's down to like 215. He's down to this. And then he weighed in for Iowa at like 2.30. I'm like, all right, so that was just fake news about him yeah. slimming Not down. fake news anymore. Well, if he makes, yeah, 2.13. But they were like, no, he's down now. He's like, yeah. and he weighed 2.30. So so Cerber must be graduating then, I guess, I'm assuming. I don't know. But either way, I feel like it makes the most sense to bring him down to one. If he can make 197, which we'll see. Making nine, Everyone thinks making 97 kilos is like. That's, That's still not 16 close. pounds. It's not like, close. He makes weight. He's 16 over for the collegiate weight. It's like, yes. they're not super connected. So no. I know they're the same numbers, but it's a little bit. put a one right there. He's put a, there you go. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, so I don't know. We'll see. But if he can make it, yeah, I think it makes sense to have him down at 197 because Cerber was not the same guy this year. Is he going to be able to get right for next year? I don't know. but So he does have eligibility left. <clears throat> oh, I don't even know. No. I just assume everyone does. We don't know. But pretty I, much. But we were talking work. about it this morning. Pretty much every weight class was like returns 27 to 30 qualifiers. It's, it's insane. 125 wild, huh? returns. 149 returns 28. 141 returns 29. Like we're just, we're just going to do last year over again, basically. And honestly, yeah. when you well, look, it did, it did feel like though, when I looked through that doc is that there's at the very least a couple top contenders out, like there's nowhere where it's like the same. So like 133, for example, six of them return, but you get rid of the top, you know, one and two, um, I guess 41 would be the closest. Cause you don't get rid of much there. Mm -hmm. Wheel woods is really it. And right? you bring in a top dog too, though. Yeah. Red shirt. Well, and mm -hmm. I wonder, is he 41 or 49? Does he go down? Mm, good question. We'll see him at uh, at at trials. Yeah. Doucet does have another year. But One he more. was asking about Cerber. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Cerber. Yes. Um, twenty three qualifiers are back at twenty eight at heavyweight. Twenty three at ninety seven. Yeah. Every this, Cer this will be Cerber's last year. Twenty twenty five. One sixty five returns thirty. Of the 33 NCAA qualifiers. 30? That's crazy. Loses the national champion, though. And, of course, Keegan is maybe going up, maybe. Uh, it's a distinct possibility. Well, there you go. Boom. All right, so what do we want to talk about here, gents? I'm looking at last chance qualifier weights. Yeah, talk talk about it. Well, I'm, I'm looking at A6. That's where Sinclair's wrestling. Uh, top contender. You have some serious senior level contenders. You have uh, McFadden, Lujan, Nelson Brands, uh, Foca. Uh, I think Morgan McIntosh maybe is in this. Yep, yeah, Morgan mm -hmm. McIntosh. Um, and then the Simon Ruiz kid. I don't really know much about him, but he had a pretty good. I was looking at his wrestling. He had a pretty good year. So um, pretty solid weight class there. Owen Webster's tough too. Yep, he's tough. One hundred percent. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Are, do they do wrestlebacks at the last chance qualifier? Mm. Or if we, should, uh, we should look that up. They said they they said they do, but it does seem weird when you're taking literally the first place person. The event is two weeks later, so even if the first place person were to get hurt, you would still have the second place person because you have a finals. Uh, so it, they are doing wrestlebacks, but it seems like why would you do wrestlebacks? Mm -hmm. It seems kind of silly. It's a good opportunity. UWW doesn't that even time. do finals if <laughs> top two qualify. Yeah, seriously, right? Yeah, but but you're you're under the impression that they do. It definitely lists the wrestlebacks in the like you know under oh, okay. the, schedule. the schedule. 
Yeah. I kind of I don't maybe maybe it's just me, but I like it. There's gonna be now it's gonna be forfeit city, no doubt. But oh yeah, if you for come sure. all, if you come all that way, get some get some matches in at least. That mat yeah. time. <laughs> that mat time for those. But that's like I don't like uh, to me. I don't know, I'm thinking me, about the like, high schoolers. I want to see them <laughs> wrestle. This is dumb though. Like, why would you go? To the last chance to get mad time. There's plenty of places to get mad time, but it's literally called the last chance. And the only number one guy goes. So all of the rest of it seems irrelevant. And if you want to get mad time, go somewhere else. Well, it, uh, well, to be fair, you not- got the PL championships this weekend. If you want mad time, show up at the PL, you get like seven matches. What's well, so David McFadden should go to the PL championship? Nelson Brands rules. Yeah, we'll, we'll let him in. If Dave McFadden wants to wrestle, we will let him in. <laughs> what about Morgan McIntosh? Can he go? Mm, he's a little too old. We'll consider. But he was a troop. That's got to count for something. <laughs> if you don't let more, if you let McFadden in, not McIntosh, I'm right, pretty mad. Fine, you're un-American. All right, it, Morgan McIntosh, you're in. If you want to skip the last chance, we got Morgan. <laughs> go to PNL, you're in. All right, that's big. I'll, I'll, should I let him so know? Funny. Let him know. All right, I'll tell him. But seriously, though, for a lot of these guys, like you're signing up for the last chance, you should know what you're signing up for. There's only one spot here. It does seem dumb to me that they would be wrestling all these wrestle bets. I'm fine with it. Efficiency. All right, 97 kilograms. Yeah. Top contenders. So I, I have Cole Marisol attending this weight. Top contenders, probably Jacob Warner, Camden McDaniel, and Christian Carroll. That's thin. How do you feel about that? Uh, That's thin. If those, Michael Boykin. Tough. He's pretty tough. Who? Who did you say, JD? Delegata. Oh, Delgado. New Jersey guy. Really? I he's feel like young, the souls have smashed him. Yeah. yeah he's, just a, he's just a name. He okay. just said the name. There's no laws against Well, he it. said he's a guy. And I I, may, I could be wrong, but I feel like. Not a person. Uh, I feel like that was smash. Yeah. Uh, I guess think about Chase Horn, 97 kilos. Yeah, Slim Horn. What? Wow. Yeah, Chase Horn and Tyree Houghton from NC State. Yeah. And C State's kind of got a situation like at 125 where they've had three or four guys who are pretty tough at heavyweight that could be definite national qualifiers probably somewhere else. Pat Pot just stockpiles the bookends. They so always many. do. They always bring in huge recruiting classes. Yeah. And then they're all good. Don't always get like the, the top 10 type big border guys, but you look at places like 20 through 100, there's always a couple couple of packers. They, ca- they actually kind of, I feel like they do get a lot of the. I mean, the Hydleys were, and Arrington was pretty high up there. Ed Scott, Ed Scott was yep. pretty high up there. Yep. Uh, Biskins was probably not top. He was like a 20-ish. Biskins yeah. was tough. He was, he's, he's good. good. There. Yeah. He's good. Ryan, I don't think he's gonna even going to make the Ryan, lineup next year either. Ryan Jack was a who's number one guy. Yeah, we'll see. Who yeah. else are they? Uh, 74 is pretty back. stacked, guys. A lot, a lot of good competitors here. Yeah, hit it. Who do you like? Uh, well, there's a lot. So we got Bearclaw. Who I think he was was he once I think he was one spot out at U.S. Open. You got Julian Ramirez. You have so USA Wrestling was temper page, so I gotta skip pages. Yeah, hey, Yaya really Thomas too. Mm-hmm. Doug Zapp, Chenzo, Joey Lavalley. That's a I mean those are three really tough you know, guys. Josh Shields, he's placed at the U.S. Open. Matt Bianchi, uh, shout out Little Rock at AWA. Derek Gilcher's had good freestyle success. William Henkel, I think, is he's probably the number two Sealy. ranked high school guy in his weight class. You got Sealy, uh, Grigor. I, I always mess his last name up. He's going to Stanford. He's Gillespie. really tough. <laughs> Jalakian. No. Oh, okay. not that one. I Charlie he, Millard. He was making a run. Um, Isaiah White, Vincenzo Joseph. I mean, that's, that's a lot of really yeah. scrappy. And then Dean Hiles at the end of his career, but he's a 74. Yep. Wait, D- no, he's not. Where? No way. He's in there. He's that I big? think he changed. Did he's he not change? listed 74 anymore. Well, wait, 65? Look. People can change. Wow. You can change. I'm worried. I'm change. worried the baby thinks people can't change, JD. <laughs> did, we, did we mention Julian Ramirez? I didn't hear it. He did. Yes. Yeah. I, okay. said, I said that yeah. name. Yep. Wow. Hmm. Jeremiah Moody's still in the mix. <laughs> Stop. Hey, guy with a has a win over Makai Lewis. Can't that's, take it away from him. That's something to be proud of. Something this is a real win. Is this uh, injury default? It's a real win. He, he really ga- he gassed him like crazy. And uh, okay, it was the year. And it was the year that Makai won Junior World. So he lost at the Open. And then oh, he, I remember that. He You're won right. trials, yeah. and then um, he won Junior Worlds. 
And then he beat Vincenzo yeah. Joseph. And then he became a hockey legend mm. forever. Some of those U.S. Open results, juniors, are pretty fun to look at. Yeah, there's. I mean, like, like Gabe Tag beating RBY. Oh yeah, he beat everybody. That was I. I sold. I sold some RBY stock. He lost to Gabe Tag, and he lost to. Um, Did he lose to uh, Decatur? No, it was um, an Illinois kid who went to uh, North Carolina. Also, I think. Um. Oh, oh, uh, Melinda. Um. No, not Melinda. Her Hernandez was there. Hernandez. Jamie Hernandez. Yes, I believe you lost to him, and I'm like, oh my god, I thought I was really expecting more, and I, I definitely sold my stock at that point. Whoops. Yeah, I know. Bad, he, bad he, idea. he didn't. He didn't rebound from there. <laughs> he kind of rebounded. Yes. Oh yeah. Um. All right. Sixty-five. A lot of fun here. Ready for this Let's one? Let's have some fun. Tristan Moran. I didn't oh know. Oh, my I, gosh. I, 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 listen, it's Ask Wrestling Academy. Let's go, Tristan. <laughs> I'm cheering for him. Uh, Jordan Williams, Ian Parker, Jay Nyerman, Dean Heil at 65, not 74. Uh, Aiden Valencia, Carter Young, Wyatt Henson, uh, Bo Bassett. Wow, lots of names here. Aiden Valencia couldn't um, win this thing. Mm-hmm. He is. I'm trying to recall. He he was really good at, at senior nationals. Yeah, he was right there. I forget who he was wrestling. Seth, I think did, well, he beat Seth Gross, but then he didn't. Like, I think was, he lost to Kalodzik at Farrell. Well, he, he was also in yeah, he, he got. Oh, that, no, that was was that a oh, man blanking. Kolodzik whooped someone, but I kind of feel like it was DeSanto that he whooped right he, in front of me. I got a few more names to add. Kolodzik, Ashnault, uh, and Pearson Manville. You know who else is on the list? Mikhail McGee up at 65 kilos, okay. which is a... Uh, makes oh, sense. Oh, wow. Makes sense. He also is listed as Virginia Beach Regional Training Center. Shout out. So Back to well, the... He's, he wait. went to ODU, so... For a couple of years. So Some of these guys just forget... They just do forget to change their... Um, Affiliations. Tristan Moran's listed as AWAs. Kind of a good I mean, player. he might as well be. Are you gonna corner him? Uh, I don't think we have anyone else at that weight class. So yeah, yeah, I will for sure. I love oh, you have Tristan. Yeah, I said. I said I don't think I have any high school kids that I'm responsible for. So, okay. Yes, I will corner him. Uh, if you should just does. corner whoever you think's gonna win the match. That's pretty obvious. <laughs> That's coaching one on one, Ben. You got a lot to learn about this industry. Uh, you're funny. Thank you. We'll not do that. All right, fine. All right, 65. 65, I think, is probably the weight for me. And I think both those high schools. I think Bo, shoot, Bo, and Aiden Pearson's Valencia. in there, too. He's Pearson good. Manville. But him taking some losses at Folk Nationals, mm -hmm. even though not the same competition, but lower level. Yes. Yeah, Aiden and Bo, I think, are, are contenders. I don't know if either. I think I think Aiden probably has a better shot at winning. I think. I think. I would love to see that match, though. That'd Aiden. be fun, right? Maybe you could just maybe you could convince the Cedars to put them next to each other. I'm gonna try. Yeah, why not? I think they're actually using the pin pin system. You that can't they're, use they're that anymore. You can't. Wait, why not? You have to because you have to explode it. You have to detonate it and send it into outer space. It's seated Luke Little Doll ahead of Spencer Lee. You just can't do it. That's it, fair. That's fair. It, 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 you should use it for like youth tournaments and no. you should use it for like, I don't, age. Hold on. I'm actually going to defend it, Christian. I think it's going to get better. The reason Spencer was probably not high as other people have, there's lack, lack of matches, which I realize is dumb. I totally understand that. Um, but a numerical system like this, if you get enough inputs, if you have enough matches, it will spit out a really good non-biased result. No, not not if you count junior results sim as same as senior results. Correct. You, you can't do that. It did I that, agree. though. If it does that, then it, you... That, They're going to figure it out. I I'm, promise. I'm putting that part in outer space. They can keep other parts, but it's already out there. It's, it's in Alpha Centauri. And for no. Olympic trials... That's where I right. put it. It's gone. I actually have faith. The numerical system is going to get it right. They have it. They have it in disc golf. They have it in chess. They have it in a lot of other places mm. where the numerical system can actually get it right. And I really, I really don't see a reason why they can't get it right here. It's just you're just comparing matches, and so obviously you're going to have some overlap between, say, junior and senior, and yeah. U twenty and senior. And when you get enough inputs in the system, it's going to work itself out. Yeah, I generally speaking okay. prefer computerized formulas like that to just people men deciding all right here's what the seeds are uh, i think men would do a better job 
No, without question. Not, <laughs> yeah. Eventually, the answer is no. If we if we do it right. Well, m- man is also making. Also, to say it's not man made, it's like no. A man is deciding what does and doesn't have value in this. That system. is true. So it's or woman. Thank you, thank you, David. Um, but man made is just kind of that's kind of like an all encompassing. Um, but may, maybe you're right. Yeah. No, I I think with enough inputs, I mean, you could definitely get it right. Yeah. The pro- I, there was some that were really bad because we did with with PNL last fall. We started with the with the pin rankings, right? And we made a list. And you saw some that were, and I think it was the kids who didn't have a crossover. Like for example, maybe they only wrestled fourteen U, but they they had a lot of success, um, and they had not bumped up in, um, you know, because if you're say you're a fourteen U, you could potentially do. Um, like a 15U at the, the U.S. Open or something like that. Mm-hmm. They had not bumped up, so they only had success against kids their own age bracket, and that did put them too high. So, um, yeah, I, I hopefully they are figuring out how to fix that issue. It, it's a good uh, – I like it as a starting point, and then it's like, okay, if you have it as a starting point, and then you're just like, all right, wait, Luke Lillidal's the one seed here, maybe something got a little messed up. Which I believe that's what they're doing for Olympic trials. Penn's going to spit something out, but then there's a committee – that will intervene yeah. or maybe it's just like a, like a criteria part of it. Um, I'm not exactly it does sure. get better and better at it for sure. You know, but, what's interesting. And isn't the end all be all for Olympic trials in the, uh, in the vein of, I don't know, seating bracketing, Daniel Cormier, let it slip on the broadcast that something that is true, which is that Carter right. Storacci was originally the seven seed and they changed it and they changed it. Not because, they wanted to bump Carter down, but because they were like, hey, we, I think it was like Canigliero. They're like, we should look at this. And when they changed Canigliero, it met, it jacked up Carter's thing, and then it shot Carter up from the seven up to the nine, which is kind of an interesting thing to think Wait, about. Wait, how would that happen? It's, I wonder how, because actually it probably would have been much better your at machines. the se- seven. Well, they didn't like – and what did – here, let me look at this. Just, you, would have, you would have to push him two two notches down to get him to nine. And well, Canegliaro so, should not have been the five. He went zero and two. They he was originally higher than that. I think was what it was. Who really? was the six? Um, Rocco Welch. Six no. was uh, what Rocco? Yeah, I think Canegliaro was originally like maybe he was the three or something even worse. What? Um, it was something with Phil, and they they okay. they changed it, and that shot up kind of everything and it made it so that he was in a so the highest carter could go originally was seven and so they voted they kept him at seven and then after that changed after they changed that one phil that made it so the highest he could go was nine and they couldn't do they literally there was no movement but but daniel i wasn't gonna say it i wasn't gonna talk about it ever but then if daniel's talking about espn i can freaking talk about it here so how interesting if he would have been the seven that changes that everything. Much better. It's a different NCAA finals. It's probably Griffith. Yeah. Um, you think Griffith? Oh, because Griffith beat Makai for third place. Yeah. But Makai might have been sad, so it might not. Have he might have been sad. I think for sure he was sad. <laughs> and so I think it'd probably been Makai. Griffith was a dog this tournament. I mean, he. Well, first of all, made, he made the semis, wrestled Strachi yep. pretty tough, and then wrestling back for third when he for sure was sad. But yep. he made himself, he beat, and he had to beat DeVos, which is a tough match. And then he had to beat Makai. Tough match. So mm-hmm. he really beat all the good guys there that he could. Uh, okay. Yeah, he so he was it, injured as well. He was definitely injured, but tough guy. Good career. I think it's done. Who's to say? He's got private equity. What's he going to do when he grows up? Private, private equity. Private equity? Private equity. Private equity. Oh yeah, bro. My goodness. All right. <laughs> From private equity, what's next? What are they saying? Uh, what are these deviants in the chat saying, David? Anything? Well, they're trying to figure out. Oh, actually, uh, the guy who's going to move to Wisconsin, I actually know him. They came to camp a bunch of times. Okay. Earlier. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't hire him? Uh, it was, he was not applying for a job for me. <laughs> oh, okay. Got it. You could have hired him anyway. You could have hired him anyway. Hey, he said, hey, I see. I see some. <laughs> you see something in someone. You say, hey, this is good. You know what? There's something here. Um, someone's talking about Tiger King. And, oh, uh, yeah. that made me think 
Someone asked me the other day what happened to the Master Giovanni's, and I, I have no idea. I, I'm <laughs> guessing that maybe they that were going to do or something so that they bought. Well, remember, because uh, one of them bought a zoo. Do you remember this? Yes, Trevor. Trevor is so a zoo. He's he is a zookeeper. Zoo? Edgar King in training. Okay. Yeah. He's about to run for political office, too. So far, I don't think any of his... Uh, any of his coworkers or any of his employees have been eaten by the tiger. So he's already got a leg up on Joe Exotic, who is also incarcerated under false pretenses. <laughs> Travis Mastro is wrestling in Northern Colorado. Yeah, he left. He's looking for bears. But the reason the Tiger King came up is because the chat was trying to figure out the name of the documentary with, with the Palmer brothers. Uh, I think it's called Pinned. Oh. But oh. Th there's a little Tiger King element in there too, because I think they wrestle bears. They like raise wild animals. So yeah, fits. Yeah, I like that. I would like to wrestle a bear. That would be fun. I mean, a declawed one, you know. But I just like to wrestle. I want to see what I could manipulate it. You know, if I could get a snap down, or if I had to, you know, po post to the far leg, low double, knock it on his butt, watch it roll around. You ever watch those the videos of like grizzly bears like fighting when they get up on their feet? Yeah, it's when they do the like double swap move like this. They're actually, yeah, it's it's kind of, there's some real wrestling. I don't want that. I want just a nice, small, Black bear. small, declawed bear that wants to, you know, wrestle a little bit. Yeah, you don't want, you don't want a brown bear. I think you need a, uh, a black bear. It's a small one. Black you bears know, are dangerous. Underhook, little, boom, put him on his back. If a I mean, black bear did it when he was like seven, so. Yeah. Yep. I could do it no problem. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be probably, it'd probably be too easy. You need something bigger. Yeah, that was, I think that was a little bear, though, just FYI. Well, he was a little person at the time. Yeah, it's fair. Two, yeah. two Blake, cubs. I don't think you could cradle a bear, because actually, you know, I, I tried to do this with my, my dog also. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you like, can't cradle dogs. <laughs> there's, like, not a notch there. There's not, not in, there's nothing to get your hand, your arm stuck on, so they, they, they just pop out. It's the hip. Time. It's the leg for me. It's too, that's what always slips out. Well, oh, I would go around the body, so I'd go, like, around the hip. You're all trying like, to cradle oh, your dogs. You know, like yeah, this. you try to near, are you near side yeah, you cradle. Know, rough them up. Yeah, yeah, they like to battle. They, they do like to battle. Dogs are suckers for quadruple legs, though. You this guy. This, quadruple legs. I'm going to tell you what. Don't let Bray around your dog because he's so crazy. B Bobby, our dog, who's he wants to battle, but I don't, he battle, I don't want to get back. Bray will battle him. When he, Bray comes over, that dog is freaking out. He wants to fight the whole time. He's ready. He does throw down. Yeah, I, he's, a good, he's, he's a worthy opponent. He, he's pretty good. <laughs> he's pretty good. He's got right. that dog in him. <laughs> he, literally. <laughs> That's one of the main things. You should see the x ray of his. Of his rib cage. <laughs> oh, <okay. Sorry. laughs> oh, Someone messed that up uh, in, uh, in wrestling Twitter this year. <laughs> like they said, he's got a dog. I forget how they did. Oh, but then they put the person. They said I think it was Gabe Arnold. Uh, they said the Gabe I was it Gabe. I don't know. I think they said Gabe Arnold's got that dog in, but then it was the X-ray of <laughs> Gabe Arnold inside the lungs. It's like no, Gabe Arnold's not actually a dog. You're supposed to show the lungs, and it's a dog in it. You're supposed to say that's an X-ray of Gabe Arnold. But what if the person was so tough that the dog has the whomever in them, right? Okay. Now we do actually have a dog with uh, someone in their lungs. That's <laughs> that, that. Maybe that's what they were doing. It's not the size <laughs> of the dog in the fight. It's the size of Gabe Arnold in the dog's lungs. In the dog's lung. <laughs> lungs. Rib cage. And that was memeing 101. That was memeing. This is how to meme. <laughs> okay. Questions? Uh, sure. Yeah, let's get to them. If there's any in the chat, please. Uh, I feel like it's been like a month since we answered any questions. I know. Me. No questions, Your Honor. All right, let's get to some of them. I, yeah. I've got it on my phone. I'm not I'm not texting. I'm looking. Mm -hmm. um, uh, someone forgot that Zahid got suspended. Yeah, that's what I was like. Oh, this is a funny question right here. Okay. Criteria, fan of Criteria. Do you think Kale pops some champagne every year when the last freshman loses like the 72 <laughs> Dolphins? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't I think he wants his guys funny. to win. Yeah. yeah. It is a funny thought. Yeah. Well, I think he, they're probably speaking nationally, but yes, like the, in this year, for example, it would have been Mitchell, uh, unfortunately. So. The thing is, he's always going to have a couple things. One, he's the first undefeated. Second, yeah. he will probably have double, nearly double the matches of any of these. Other, all these other people, they, they wrestle 20 matches a year. Yeah, they're going to get to maybe 100. Yeah. Uh, maybe a yep. hundred. I mean, Aaron Brooks had five seasons and didn't have a hundred matches. That's freaking ridiculous. Yeah. So 
Um, he'll always have 159, and his bonus rate will always be probably unchallenged. But yeah, I, I and I also don't. He doesn't give me. Well, the I vibe disagree of, with the bonus rate. I think people are, people are way more likely to get the bonus rate uh, than they are the matches because bonus is significantly easier. Um, remember, uh, Tech Falls went up by like was it a hundred percent? No, more than hundred percent this year. It's one hundred twenty percent or something. Yeah, maybe so. I'm thinking pins and mm-hmm. techs. He still had a lot of pins. Still got to put the shoulders on the mat, and the ref yeah. slaps it. Yeah, there's no change pins in pins. Are pins are for people who aren't skillful enough to do that. Pins. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tech falls. Tech falls are for people who are not skillful enough there you to go. pin people. And Ben, yes, there you go. All right, someone put a question up there. Um, I saw it momentarily. I saw someone putting it on the screen. So, somebody was uh, asking about. Away. Somebody's asking for insights on the co- coaching positions at Central Michigan and Buffalo. I think Central Michigan's going internal. It sounds like they're hiring Ben Bennett. That's just rumor mill. No idea I mean, about. We heard John Reeder a bunch, but now. It, well, everyone it just said it. Like ben everyone just kept saying it, but. It, well, I'm sure there's a reason it was said in the first. Well, I, well, I heard anything they, more than he's just from Michigan. I had heard they hadn't reached out that he hadn't spoken to him. Zeke Jones is okay. from Michigan. Maybe he's in the in the mix. <laughs> Zeke Jones, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, maybe you give uh, Kale a call. It is kind of sad that Casey. I mean, I, and I know Casey loves where he's at right now, but it does just seem like such a perfect opportunity. Casey Cunningham goes back to the place where he was, I believe, Borelli's first national champion, and maybe the first national champion at Central Michigan. Takes over the program. He's you know been this long time amazing assistant coach to Kale. And, you know, then strikes out his own. It would be fun to watch him attempt to have that high level success. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I don't think Central Michigan's even fully funded. I think they have like five or six scholarships or something. So I don't think he'd step into that. Well, he could just take some of that NLWC money on the way out and golden. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. that That's called uh, stealing. Actually, that's a strategy that some coaches have used. Um, just, you know, hey, oh, well, I, mean, I raised it for this school, but I'm going to go to this school and I'm going to take some of them dollars with me. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. It's like we're, they're like recruits. It feels, it feels steal, steely, but, uh, steely. you know, I'm not one to judge. Yes, I am. All uh, right. How about Buffalo? Any idea on Buffalo? No, I know they're looking. Um, they just formed like a search committee like Friday or Saturday. So. Um, I, I don't know. And Buffalo's potential is, I'm, I'm curious, like how good it, it can be. It se- seems like it certainly can do better than it has been. And it was probably time for a change there. Um, yeah. but yeah, I don't know who's interested. D- do you look at someone like Donnie Vinson, who's kind of from that sort of area in New York, he may be ready for, for a job like mm-hmm. that. Um, I think of someone with New York ties, but yeah, I don't know. That'd be – that's just my thoughts. Is this going to be a, a big carousel year? I don't Do you know. think we'll just set off dominoes? Man, it felt uh, like – doesn't it, feel like it yet. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be that. Everyone's talking about a big domino, but I don't think it's happening. If it was happening, I think it would have happened. I kind of agree. Yeah. So, okay, next question. What else we got next here? Next topic. I mean, the real Avery Lynch uh, wants he, this real Avery Lynch wants to know if Vito has uh, become the official king of Space Mountain. Hmm. I feel like Vito. The low is low. really good. The lows have to be quite. lower. Yeah, but yes, lows got to be lower. Then you lost to Ryan Crookham. Like he's probably gonna be a three-time champ. Come on. Well, I could relax on that. But um, all right, he has the possibility to be. He'll be number one ranked going yeah. into next year, etc. Yeah, I think. I mean, it's, he definitely will be. It still kind of is, though, because l- look at his approach in his matches, his two his two losses. Look at his approach in that, and you just look at what he did at NCAs. He's like, he just like decided I'm Vito, and he smoked Crookham. Like it Major. was not competitive. He, yeah. it was such it was such a, it was so different that I don't know. It's kind of a. When the level is that high, he was so clearly the best guy in a really tough weight. To man, we were talking about we were talking about Kyorini. Those were those were like, is this a match? Is he going to be able to get? You know, we weren't talking about the semi. We we're like, is this going to end bad? 
Right? Really? I thought I think I picked him to lose in the semi and the injury default out because we we thought yeah. there was injury. <laughs> we thought there was injury, but then well, that was the thing. I don't think there was any injury. I, I think don't know. I think there was, but I think I don't know. He just overcame it. Hey, Hi. you know what I just looked at, which seems mind bottling because we're talking about Space Mountain. Um, I think does McKee have another year? No, or no. No. He did, he put an Instagram oh, post out about how his career is over. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. He's probably king of Space Mountain, though. Forever. Yeah. But did his highs ever get high enough? Because that's the thing. Oh, I, yeah. I guess he got third. But were the lows low yeah. enough for Vito? Yeah. Yeah. His highs go out mm-hmm. higher. But the floor is a lot higher. So it's, but it's the dist. you know, it's the distance. <laughs> I, th- I think Space Mountain is a guy who has insane pinning capabilities, but then can lose a match by like getting a Rogatsky Like a Rogatsky would be a great example. Yeah. Like he literally. Pinnacle just making those Space Mountain characters. <laughs> yeah. Love the fight. Love the, love the roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> love Cedar Point. <sighs> These are all things they Funny. could put on their shirts. Was someone asking like about the toughest weight? Or something like that. Um, we talked about that last week. Okay. Uh, you know, I thought this was an interesting question. And actually, I have an opinion on it. We've had Neutral Danger for a stretch of years now. Any thoughts on the adoption of Neutral Danger? Originally, I thought it would open up all new creative t- techniques to trap opponents in danger. It does. People just don't use it. They're not creative enough. But it seems to have been less impactful than I had imagined. So it is very, it has very much been less impactful. To the point where, like, there's a lot of times where I feel like it's neutral danger, and I think it happens so infrequently that the refs just forget to start counting. Like, they're not counting neutral danger. And then someone says, oh, neutral danger, and then they're like, oh, boom. And then it's like four seconds later, you know? I don't know. I feel like it's had a huge impact on wrestling. And I think just the counts alone, I see, I disagree. I do think they are... Really? Just generally, like, uh, maybe a second late in when they start it. But I feel like... It's pretty rare they're just like not counting it, and I think there's been there was a few times where I w- it was like apparent to me that someone was on his back and the the ref for whatever reason had not started counting at all. Yeah, but what I'll say is like just because a neutral danger zone takedown isn't called doesn't mean it doesn't ultimately lead to the takedown. Just like the the Bo yeah. ba- the Bo Bartlett Mendez example, like uh, not even their first match actually, second like. Bo was going to give up neutral danger at the end of the match at NCAA. So, so he bailed out. Right. So it was a regular takedown, but it was going to be a neutral danger zone takedown. Ultimately he was on his back and they were counting, but then he just kind of had to bail on the, on the position. Yeah. So I think it contributes to a lot of takedowns. I think I've seen, yeah, I don't know. I love it. I think it's a great rule. I think mostly officiated correctly. I think, There were a lot of, this is going to be a disaster. This is going to go so bad. I think it's gone fine. I think it's been good. And it's kind of like what you're saying. People have adapted their counters and offense or whatever Mm -hmm. so that you don't get put in neutral. Yeah. It it has had an effect for sure. Yeah. I like it. It it seems like the impact too is like if you get neutral danger wrong as an official, maybe maybe the guy was – in neutral danger for four seconds and and you only swiped it twice or whatever, where there used to be 30, 40 seconds of guys just hanging out on their backs. Yeah, that's true. And that, yeah. that is the part that it's eliminated. And that's, I think wrestling is much better for that. Yeah, I agree. Do we need to adapt a top danger? What does that mean? Top. As in, if you're in the top position, get into a scramble, you roll on your back should there be something where you can't get, you can't hang out there? Because hmm. I, I saw that a couple of times. I feel like that happens very infrequently because obviously you don't have the ability to lock your hands, so you can't hang on quite as well. You could lock through the crotch, of course. Um, I, I don't see that being an issue. Yeah. The one weird, uh, sort of in that vein, JD, I think we might have talked about it last week on the show, but the idea, I think Tyler brought it up, like you're on top and then the guy's working from bottom and he ends up on a, like a standing single leg, but the yeah. other guy's earning riding time is kind of like a weird, like that's weird. Well, that's where we said we, I mean, we said we came to the conclusion last week that or whenever it was 
Um, just like rear standing is a reversal, um, I think foot in the air should be a reversal. Oh, that would like, be cool. If you get their foot in the air, it should be a reversal. Yes, it's not take jumping to here. Neither is rear standing, but they're both their reversals. I don't know how You're I You're obviously feel. in more control than they are That's at that point. That's kind of a cool idea. But I don't know how I yeah. feel about different criteria for reversal versus a takedown. Like but if you get somebody's foot up in the air, that's not a takedown. Or at a minimum. Well, standing's not a takedown. Well, maybe I kind of have an issue with that. At a minimum, it seems like you why? should. Yeah, why? Yeah, why? And then I got, I got something to say too. Because why is one considered control, quote unquote, and one isn't? Like, seems like it should be, if it's a takedown, it should be a reversal. If it's a reversal, it should be a takedown. If it's not, then it's not. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, but then obviously, so if someone were to say, you know, stand up uh, on bottom and the top person has rear standing, you wouldn't say that person does not have control. You would say that person does have control, which I would guess would make your argument to it should be a takedown. Um, and that's probably, I would probably like find that argument to be more compelling than the other other way. That okay, yeah. Not, I don't necessarily think yeah. standing up with locked hands, but both guys are still standing should be a takedown. But yeah, good point. That shouldn't be a reversal or an escape either. I don't know. I gotta think about it. Because you can't tricky. call it, you can't call it an escape. If I have your foot in here, you can't call it an escape because then I'm so close to a takedown. Also, so that I'll get an escape and a takedown. That wouldn't make sense. But you could call it a reversal, right? You could call it a reversal and start switching riding time and whatnot. I don't know. I kind of like that situation specifically how it is, where I feel like a lot of times. You get to the leg and you go out of bounds, they call escape, but they let you work for the reversal. Yeah. Yeah. In but so if, if you're on the mat, if you're on the mat, not reversal. If you if you have the leg in the air, specifically the leg is up in the air, then that's a reversal. But I, but I don't think, again, I don't think that's control quote All right. unquote. Okay. But it does see it seems like obviously you would say the person on the leg has more control than the person with the leg in the air. You would say that for sure. Yeah, which is why I like it where they right. call it escape. When you but don't they don't call it escape, they don't call it escape there. Unless they go out of bounds. So you could be hopping around for twenty seconds and the bottom the person who has the leg in the air is still getting riding time, which is preposterous. So then you're forcing you're essentially forcing the, the single legger to let go of the leg, right? Um, and avoid a reversal attempt. Or continue to give up ride time. It could be like stalling where you stop riding time. That's what I thought. Yeah. Stop riding time. You could do that. Yes. I would be okay with that. All right. PSU over also. or under 150 next year? My initial thought is mm. over because they bring back a lot of guys minus yes. Aaron. But then you toss in maybe a Shane Van Ness. Um, but how many more points? I mean, I think... Aaron scored a lot. No, no, no. Kasek scored like 20 points, 21. Yeah, how much more can they get at that weight class? So you bring in Van Ness. If well, Van that's what I'm saying. They don't lose points at that weight. All right. But but, but they're going to lose points likely. I think you're probably saying at 74, 84, 97 is where they lose a bunch of points. They have to make those points up somewhere else. How are they going to make those points up? Well, I think 125 and 133 were good weights where they did not get NCAA production. Uh, you would expect that not to repeat with the with whoever they're using, whether it's Luke, Braden, Aaron, between those two weights. 41, you expect similar. 49, you expect similar. 57, 65, however they do it, you're expecting 20-plus points there. And then it's well, yeah. if Carter comes back. You so know. they got, hold on, they got five points of 25 and 33 total, Christian. Yeah. And at 74 through 97, they got they got 59 and a half. So they have to figure out what they're doing there. I mean, obviously, if Carter comes back, it's easier. But if not, that's a lot of points. Yeah. It's it's a cop-out. But um, I'll say they get – I mean, 150 is pretty rarefied. They've done it a few times. Yeah. But I, I think they probably – they're. I think it's a good number. I would guess they get it. Because I think Greg comes back, Bo comes back, and you know Carter's a huge loss. That's twenty some points, but I think yes, there's a he good. He got twenty, but I'm bet I got twenty seven. I think he comes back. Like, why can't you talk Carter into a second semester thing? I mean, part let, of the thing would be if you know Carter already nationally wants to move on, 
and maybe you're going to go, um, I mean, uh, you, you could go a few different ways with this, but maybe you go uh, Kasak, Van Ness, Mitchell, Haynes. That's 49, 57, 60, right? I mean, like, there's kind of a few different ways you could go with that. Um, you know, you have a bunch of guys in there. I mean, you have Seeley in there also who's not even starting. Um, you yeah. probably have Bar. Bear Claw. You could put Bear Claw, who's really good. So I was, I was talking about 49 through oh, 74. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, 84 could be... Uh, bar or rider potentially mm -hmm. uh, but yeah that's 49 through 74 you have plenty of guys to fill those spots get mirasola gets you some big ncaa points in there 97 ncaa i mean yeah it's like i don't know if he'll start he's really good he i was where i i put a video of me working I, we had a, one of those saturday morning practices oh he's getting so much stronger we did just like the we did this drill where you go baseline gut defense where you just, they're trying to squeeze as hard as they can you know going one way and you're not trying to turn you over just squeeze as hard as they can the other guys just d them up you know and you hold for you know 10 seconds then switch direction holds for 10 seconds just to kind of get that baseline position stronger his this mug squeezed me so hard i didn't want to be a baby about it but i'm like oh my god i hate my life right now i swear my <laughs> organs are gonna explode or something like i haven't been squeezed like this in a lot of years it's been a long time since i got squeezed like this this dude is so ridiculously strong right now how much like weight training did the twins do is that proprietary uh, i don't know i think they just go lift rocks or <laughs> smash trees or something like... <laughs> hockey four style yeah they just do the old I don't school know. i'm sure they lift some weights somewhere does Aiden lift? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a strength coach. Okay. We don't really get much into the strength and conditioning. Well, yeah. We do. We run a strength and conditioning program for the um, for the younger kids. Uh, we have one of those at, I think, three locations. Um, and maybe we'll do more at some point. But uh, for the high school kids, they mostly have the, they get their own coaches. I'll bet. That. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very yeah. something. I liked this question mm -hmm. kind of in the – the Penn State vein. Prime Bo Nickel yeah. versus Prime Aaron oh. Brooks. Who wins? This is, this I thought we crazy. talked about this one time. And, we did. And Christian got mad at me for saying Bo Nickel had a good chance. Uh, well, I don't think I got mad. Um, I maybe disagreed. Well, I, I think an easy thing you can do, they're both kind of similarly dominant their senior years. Bo, yeah. pr probably more dominant, but probably didn't get – I don't know if he gave up a takedown. He may have. Aaron didn't, but yeah. doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. I, I think where where are they at the world at the world level at that point in time? Right? It yeah. feels like Aaron is higher world class than Bo was. Bo I mean, was a U twenty three world champion, I think, after so, his senior year, but he lost to Jaden at Final X, which Jaden was a uh, did he win was bronze or gold that year. Huh? Did he win bronze or gold? In 2019, uh, Jaden won. Won, so he lost to a world champion. World champion, kind of, kind of, and then he lost Jade, to David Taylor. Jaden controlled it, but uh, it was not a. We weren't blowouts. Not that Jaden really blows anyone out. Um, yes. And so I don't know. I it, it's tough. Like I just have a hard time. My thing is, and what I kept coming back to is, I don't think they ride each other, right? Okay. And I don't think Bo can take down Aaron. And I think Aaron probably gets one. One takedown. Yeah. How does how does mm. Bo Nickel he's gotta like he's gotta win a scramble. Headlock. Like or a headlock. Can we say in this scenario they are not familiar with each other? So you toss out like the whole oh they work out and they're at that Ooh, point, there at you that go. point Ooh, they, I like it. At that point I wonder how familiar they really were. Um Well Prime Aaron is now familiar with but, oh, is now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm saying Aaron doesn't have that familiarity mm -hmm. because Bo can kind of present some funky, weird things. He's got big move potential. Mm -hmm. And I think that Aaron's similarly, I think Aaron's like hand fighting and pressure he puts on is something that like you do need to experience it to learn how to deal with it. Like that was one thing Miles Amin said, like he like you it's weird, like the the pressure he can put on with his hand fight. Now something he had mm -hmm. to adjust to. Um, so I don't know. I I, th I think Aaron was probably what I, what I thought, and I think that's still my conclusion. But I don't know. I mean, Bo's, Bo's one of the best to ever do it, for sure. 
maybe it's just recency. I feel like I lean Aaron, but poof, uh, it's 51, 50. I feel like percent. I'm not feeling strong about it. Yeah. It'd be a great match. What What is it about Bo Nickel that allowed him to force people to engage in like high risk positions that they no normally wouldn't? I don't know. Pressure. Yeah. And he just, he lets it fly. Yeah, but he wasn't like a big like come out leg attack a bunch of like like mm -hmm. Nolf was or Mitchell is or yeah. whatever. Um, but if he was if it was just an exchange, it was like he's gonna win the exchange every time. He's gonna out scramble. Yeah. He's gonna whatever. He had a he's great upper body. Um, two of his losses were like from upper body positions to Miles that were sort of weird. Um, mm -hmm. He got body locked at Big Tens. So you're just kind of looking for vulnerabilities. And honestly, you think about the Marcus Coleman win, that's kind of like a Bo Nickel kind of like, you would call it a mm. junk move, but like Bo made junk moves very cool and successful and worked for him. <laughs> so I don't know. Yes. Th going back, like Bo didn't have a, a, a Marcus Coleman type of loss in his he career. Did not. It, it is so crazy. I don't really want to relitigate it, but the... Uh, how, how quickly you put Aaron Brooks ahead of Logan Stever is just crazy to me. Like Logan was so much more dominant. I feel like he beat way better fields. He beat Jordan Oliver, Tony Ramos, Zane Rutherford to win three of his NCAA titles. And on top of some other really good guys, like I thought you were way, way too dismissive. And it, it honestly betrayed your own listen, no, perspective this, on okay, dominance. Listen, you stop, you stop your words right now. You stop your words. You guys, let's let's rehash this. This wasn't, hey, Ben had, you know, a day to come up with a list. This was, someone asked, JD and Christian were too scared. I gave mine. And Ben, Ben, off the cuff, listed his seven, <laughs> seven four-time champions. Yeah. That's what happened. I didn't stare at it for an hour to look at the sheet and look at all the stats and look yeah. at it because I might have came up with a different answer. I may not have. I don't know. This was, you guys, you were fearful. You're scared. You're cowardly. Don't let me in with this. And I, gave I came mine. out as the brave. Yeah, I like JD being host scared too. Of FRL, <laughs> who would make the list. In fact, I gave mine before you. I gave mine on the watch party. No, yeah. you did not. I you did, did too. Not. Go rewind the show. You did not. Watch no party way. doesn't count. Whatever said there doesn't count. Yeah, and even if you sing a song on the watch party, it doesn't count either. Yeah, <laughs> watch party does not count. When they say hot mic, you gotta you gotta be aware. Hot mic. All right, there's other questions in here. Um, oh, yeah, the new Roadhouse. We talked about that. Is there any concern that the larger mirror solo won't grow into a good size heavy? How big he going to get? Uh, you know what? I don't know. I'll see him. I'll see him in a few days. His dad, his dad keeps telling me. I saw his dad yesterday or maybe Saturday. I don't know. I saw his dad just recently. And he said, he said he's gotten bigger. Took a couple day vacation. Said he got bigger. We'll see how big he is. You know, he's I, already like 215. So, I mean, <sighs> like. What does he got to get to, to be 230 to be, you know, Kassar was a man's champ at 230, right? I mean, not, it's not that much bigger. Felt, it was a big concern with Feldman for really during different parts of the year. We were like, he's not, is he going to yeah. be big enough? You, I think you, it's something where it feels like experience really helps if you're undersized too. Like you kind of figure out the pitfalls and whatnot. Um, yeah, I f it feels like 230 is where you got to get to. Kurt Angle won one at 209. He's bigger than that. Yeah, with a broken freaking with neck. With a broken neck. <laughs> we had to say <laughs> he had a broken neck in all of his competitions. Uh, when were the last really good set of twins in NCAA wrestling? Ooh, we, we've, seen, we've seen good brothers, Boy, even Terry, recently too, but Tom twins. Paulson's, Paulson's, yeah. I think that's going to be the Paulson's, answer. Yeah, there you go. Um. Because you'd say Alton's did not achieve a high enough level of success. I mean, they're obviously really good. Only one All American between the two. That's crazy, right? It is so crazy because they were really good. Um, mm -hmm. What other mother's things? worst nightmare? A mother's. Yeah, I could think of worse things, but <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this is rock bottom. Yeah, I can't think. of I mean, the Steiners and the Brands were obviously great. Um, who who was good between yeah. them? Steiners, Brands, or were there other twins? Do we have to the wait Bannocks. for the Bannocks? That was older. We keep Are they twins? Back. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. And yeah, twins. Our twins. twins. Those twins, they were six. And there was one other panic who's not a twin. <laughs> Yeah, right? maybe, maybe. You're the historian. I believe there's three Bannocks. Two of them are twins. One is not. Lou and Ed are the twins. Um, who? Lou and Ed Bannock? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Huh. I believe. Yeah, Gable got lucky getting all them twins. Yeah, that helped. Hey, that's a smart play. A, time. a lot of times you get one, you get both. Were two the, for one. Were the Willits mm-hmm. brothers twins or no? Yes, they're twins. Because, Ooh, good yeah, call. they're twins. We've got the Stennis. Oh, uh, the Wicks right were now. twins, right? Right. Who? I'm pretty sure Evan and Evan and Xander are twins. Oh, am I wrong on this? Not, no, not, no, you're not, right. not identical. You're not right. identical. Yep. They're twins. Mm-hmm. I felt not like identical, they. Had, I thought they were so different eligibility wise. Oh, I should ask Evan. I feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we're not live. It's cool. Uh, no, we're, we're not live. No one's listening to no us. No right one's now. listening. I kind of feel like they're I not twins. Feel like they were. It's a, you can anything you say that's wrong today, you can just say it's April Fools. I was joking. Yeah, I was kind of thinking it's kind of that we probably should have done something better for April Fools. Yeah, did not. I was honestly worried. I was like, I'm very prankable and they're jerks <laughs> and they may do an April Fool on me. But I should have got one, but they didn't. So it's good. All right. I, there was another question. Hold on. So Mir Sola, Which other one, is, he's only 215 right now. I got to get a little bigger, but. He'll go to the creamery above. Really? That's all of them. I think we accomplished our task and we're four minutes early. And then uh, I'm not ranking the Indiana national champions. Sorry, not doing it. Christian wow. Yell at me some more. Wow. They're twins. You know what? I I'll will say... get FRL. I will get JB and uh, Bo on together too. If Christian would let me, I will get them <laughs> on here to settle the differences. Uh, yeah. Open invitation to those two if they want to come on. They will not. Uh, uh Oh, what? hold on. The Wicks are twins. I'm confirming it right now. All right, they're twins. Yep. All right, okay. that's I thought so. I they're twins. You know what I'll say about Indiana? Now, I don't know if it's just C.J. Kemp just berates us about Indiana all the time. It could be that. But in my mind, I feel like, and David can probably confirm this, but I feel like Indiana is one of those states that's got, like, crazy state pride. They're all, I feel like they always are, like, they feel like they're kind of slept on as like an elite wrestling state, which it absolutely is. They're not an elite wrestling state. Okay. <laughs> Listen, they're second tier. <sighs> they are second tier. Oh my gosh. Um, Wisconsin is second tier. We're trying to work our okay. way into that first tier, but you would not put Indiana in the first tier wrestling okay. state. There's no I way. I apologize to Indiana. You're not first tier. <laughs> Don't apologize. We apologize for nothing. Yeah. And I'm not sorry. Out. Get better. Yeah, get better, Indiana. Yeah, joke state. It's not even as good as Virginia, honestly. In terms even Wisconsin's of- second tier. We're, try- we're trying to move up into that first tier. That's our goal. We did pretty well this year. We're going to continue to keep doing that so you guys think we're first tier. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's so first tier you got probably – now I'm going to offend someone, but that's like my job, right? Is uh, So PA oh. is definitely first tier. Uh, California, Ohio, New Jersey – those four are definitely first tier. I think I probably would consider putting Illinois in there, maybe Minnesota in there. Um, I maybe think I think about New York a little bit. Um, mm. Yeah, those are probably where I'd go with my first tier. Yeah, I would say just then, neglecting right, per capita. Yeah. I hate, I hate <laughs> right that. after that, right after that, you probably got Iowa, Virginia, Wisconsin, Indiana's probably getting in there. Right after that, all you know, somewhere in that second tier. Yeah. Are you hearing me, Virginia? You keep not no no, no that's you, la- last you tier. keep tier you last. keep not saying Virginia and it feels intentional. The like, thing is, yeah, Virginia. That's like I will say they have more state champions than anyone else. More state champions. <laughs> <laughs> more state champions. Okay, that's that's a criteria. Also, more presidents, which that has to count for something. That's the ultimate they wrestling like match. The only state for they existed for a while or something. Well, history is on our I don't side. Think that was ever true, but yeah, there's yeah. I don't know. We'd have to go back and, uh, and study it all. All right, we'll go. It's 10 o'clock. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll be back Thursday. We'll be here one day before I head to the great state of Virginia, an elite wrestling Oh, you're state. going too. I oh, forgot. I'm going, baby. Last chance, baby. Yeah, we're going to party. Go. It's going to be so fun. But I'll. But before I leave, we'll do the show on Thursday. It could be very fun. JD will be here. Ben will be here. I don't know if Bray will be here. It could be Kozak. It won't be Tyler. Tyler is in Japan. He's having a time. 
That's all we can really say. Is it's a it's a time, and he can come back and report on that next week. Thank you guys so much. Hope you have a great Monday. Happy April Fools. Hope you guys had a great Easter yesterday. And uh, see you next time. Goodbye.